Shen Wei, painter, director, dancer, choreographer, visionary. Describe yourself to me in one word, if you can. Curious. Why? I think I really always fascinated about human life. I also fascinated about the world. You left home at the age of nine to study opera. It's quite an early age to leave and you were gone for a very long time. Tell me about the experience and how it changed you. I think during that time when it's nine years old, um, you kind of excited because you can leave your parents. In San Ho, you can go with another kids together. And especially you've been chosen, really difficult to chosen to select to be, to be in that group. What was it about you that was so unique that you were one of those very few children that was chosen? Um, I didn't expect that happening because I want to, because when I go to audition, I didn't really prepare for audition. I should go with my brother because I was too young mm. to be in that select age. Um, but the, the judge think I'm, you know, I was sitting inside and said, can you do something? I said, wow, yeah, I don't, I didn't prepare anything. I can just dance and, you know, sing in the most uh, simple song, like a Christmas, some, you know, really simple song, able to know how to sing it. And um, they think I have this kind of quality, be an artist, and uh, that I be selected, you know, like two kids from each city. And um, we do three months training, then the end, I'm the one being chosen from the city. But I remember when my mom was so sad. Mm because she was crying so hard because, you know, nine years old, I'm, I'm not living in the same city even, which means I have to do like a boarding school mm. and uh, my parents, they only can come see me twice a year when I was nine. You were able to explore a lot of different mediums when you were at the school. And I think one thing that I found surprising was the number of mediums that you excelled in. One of them was oil painting, classical oil painting. Can you tell me how you made that journey to painting, which would ultimately make an enormous impact on your dance career? But I want to understand how you discovered painting. Personally, I love Chinese painting. I was doing calligraphy and the Chinese and um, gongbi, like uh, the Chinese style painting, watercolor painting for a long time. The, about oil painting, actually it's a huge switching after I graduate find the Hunan Art School in 1984. Then in 1985, um, China, during this time, China started to open to the West. I think my journey is so interesting, re, really related to the history of China and our time, how things change and develop, because they affect my person so much. If I'm continue, like if China is not open, to like the Western culture or Western um, door come to China during the 1980s, then we never have a chance to know Western painting, oil painting. Because after I graduate, I know all the new information come to bookstores. We're talking about discovery, because before that, we're all about China, about the history, about the, the tradition. That's all my deep roots is. Then, one was 1985, then we certainly have all the Western information comes in. And that's kind of shocking for me. But at the same time, I immediately grabbed the, the beauty when I saw the drawing from Da Vinci and Michelangelo. I remember I was young, even not even graduated. As soon as I see that drawing, it's like a, such a beautiful, drawing about a human being. I remember all this um, drawings from Da Vinci, from different faces, different women holding the hat, the nose, and also Michelangelo's drawings about the human body and the face, hair. Was just so much beauty that I never thought that, you know, I never connected through my Chinese or Eastern trainings or education that I have that immediately passion drove by this beauty, this kind of way of expression through drawings. 
Then I said, "Oh my God, love those!" I started to copy that. I think what's striking about it is that、mm. this is the very first time in your development as an artist that you blend East and West. And I tell me why that was. I can tell a little bit from what you've said, but I want to understand how that was so powerful for you. Because a lot of your philosophy for the next couple of years, many many years, has been about the blending of East and West, of contemporary and older art form, forms. I think、uh, in the in the end, I never try to put the East and West together. I never think that's my mission. I never think it, that it should be my mission. Is Blending East and Western culture together because I'm not a museum doing exchange programs.、Mm. I'm just an artist living in my life. That my experience has been deeply involved to my understanding Western culture and the Eastern culture. That somehow developed my kind of taste. Then tell me, at that point, how did you view modern dance in China when you were on that part of your journey? I. First,、uh, because I have the old tradition roots of Chinese opera, everything has to do exactly how tradition goes.、Um, I still love that form, but at the same time, when I s- step into the contemporary dance and modern dance, I think how I can still use the, my new sense that I have developed through my understanding Western culture to. You know, to work that way for the Chinese、um, life people, their condition during those times. Shen Wei pushed me really hard as a dancer, and I became a much better dancer. And I did things and. Roles in his work that I would never have imagined myself doing when I first came into the the company, and was only on stage for maybe five minutes out of the evening, and watching him do certain roles or other dancers do certain roles, and just being like, "That's not going to be me." And he pushed really hard,、um, and didn't let me as a dancer kind of keep to those limitations. So you spent this time period digesting the West,、yes. experiencing. The West, in a way, your art was experienced in a, in a way you hadn't expected. Yes. And then suddenly you arrive in New York City. Tell me what it was like to have learned about the West through your art, and then to arrive in New York. What did it feel like? It's so interesting when you learn from book. It's so different、mm-hmm. than when you live in that. I think、uh, that's a very huge difference. Is we are human life being where.、Uh, Well, life. That's number one. Because sometimes you live in through books, somehow it doesn't really transform what is it is exactly this. When I moved to New York, because I live here, I really in that culture. Really, even everything is in that way. How Western culture, even communication, how you express yourself. How you understand each other, even how you take a joke,、mm-hmm. you know how you open a, a account or any poach anything, that's so different. It's like a black or white different how China or how the Eastern way how it works, which means when you read at books, it does not transcending what really Western culture is, unless you really living in New York City. And experience for years. How did it impact your art? Because as I could see your art developing, and what you know, I've read, it seems like your art started to take on a very surreal, dreamlike quality、mm. um, after a couple of years in New York. I want to understand what the impact of arriving here was on your art at the time. You live in your city. Your friends, your parents are not here. You're kind of pretty alone, but at the same time, you still. Thinking the beauty of life, of the beauty of the art, and about everything in your memory, I would dream a lot,、mm. and I still try to find your fantasy land. Then you still in this kind of surreal world, and、um, but at the same time, you every time you discovering something here, you find that, wow, that's amazing. Then you poach, you see a dream come through. Then you step in, step in to understand everything, to open all your senses to see the beauty around you. 
um, the same time, my during this time, I my health also had a little problem. I dream a lot and uh, and uh, feel also have crazy dreams and uh, nothing real. Everything uh, flies all the time. I. I just like I talk to animals in my dreams. Did they offer you any advice? It seems like sometimes no. when animals appear, there's a they don't, I, message. They don't know. It's like a friend. Hmm. It's the chatting, and those kind of things have affect me during those period a lot. So you were very emotionally sensitive during that period. Yes. And you were dreaming about uh, friendships of animals. Yes. And uh, was it at that time that dance and com and painting began to combine for you? Yes, my painting during those times also started more surreal, surrealistic, and uh, just about human bodies mm. and the forms, movements. In terms of an art form, um, I think he's done something that I haven't seen from a lot of modern dance choreographers. Um, in terms of contextualizing his work on the larger. Um, art history timeline of like surrealism and abstract art and postmodern art and you can kind of see that in each one of his pieces are a very specific vision and a very specific um, artistic statement um, and he goes through phases he goes through you know he has you know three or so kind of surrealist pieces he has three kind of very modern, abstract, movement-based pieces. And then just in terms of the dance, seeing the body as a tool, as a tool to, to paint, as a tool to make a piece of art. I don't know, it's something I started trying to why I was so attached with the surreal qualities, the beauty of our lives. Um, during this period. And then you modified Stravinsky. Yes, once I have, uh, of course, when I started, you know, living here, every day is a learning process. Every li I life is learning, you know, discovering things. When I started discovering more things, then I start really into the, into abstract, mm. you know, communications. That sense, the power, abstractness, abstract things that make me somehow click to me in different part of my my you know, my senses, and that I don't have that before. And uh, study then working with uh, the production of uh, uh, Stravinsky's Right of Spring, that really brought all my another part of uh, my sensitivity into uh, my life. I think and. Uh, you know, um, that piece, I have to understand the structure of the music, understand the background, and, um, and uh, how I'm going to um, put myself out myself. You know, sometimes you will think an artist is so personal. Sometimes artists, the things actually is not that personal. You know, of course, it's my personal feelings, my personal sensitivities, my personal thoughts, but I take my person out. It's dealing with all the forms and the rhythms. This just seems a really extraordinary part of your journey because deconstructing someone, a composition like Stravinsky, is a very, very tall order. And I guess what I want to get a sense of is how did you believe in your art enough to start deconstructing one of the greats? Remember the first time I see Marco Rothko's painting, I was like, it's interesting, but I really don't understand. You know, long time ago. Then I see again, why does painting make me want to see this painting again? But I don't get it last time. I don't like it. I say I do not. But the second I go see it, there's something just striking me, making me want to see that painting more than another painting. Then again, again, the study, I understand, ah, oh, that is a sense that I communicate with that painting more than one, the traditional classical painting in the site. And I started discovering more, okay, then I started understand the communication, how you with abstract forms, that with human beings, how our sense communicated with not kind of things that we don't have, I don't have before. That may develop the way I have a really <coughs> interesting in how work on Stravinsky's Red of Spring. I think he has a way with words where it's not explicit. He'll say like, you know, four words or something and they'll mean a lot. Working with him, I found 
a lot less limitations on what I can do because I'm honest with myself. With some choreographers, it's about having a specific shape or a specific number of something, um, a specific performance quality. And I feel with Shen Wei, it's always qualitative. It's, do you have a sharp, quick quality? Do you have a, a supple quality, a silky quality? Um, and he choreographs in, in those elements rather than in movement, 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 stillness, movement. Um, he'll kind of listen to a piece of music and, and think of the quality and how, what kind of movement goes with that music or that, that scene that he's trying to set up. You are at a very, very nice point in your career. You're deconstructing Stravinsky. You've had a couple of um, incredible shows. You're combining dance and paint. And suddenly you decide to go travel. Not just to any place, but you go to Cambodia, you go to Tibet, you go to some places that are difficult, that are very emotionally heavy. Tell me why you decided to do that. A lot of people around me right now, everybody asking me what life means. Hmm. Oh, but this two years are crazy. Almost all of my really good friends, a lot of people, they always ask the same question, even the how, no matter how successful people, they are really, they were asking me what the life meaning is. And I was asking myself that question a lot too. But uh, I think it's something in our journey of a, of a human being is discovering ourselves, discovering everything around us. Don't you understand that? Then to see what things can bring the joy of your journey. Then, then for me, life is a non-stop discovering or study or education process, depends which words you want to use it. For me, is after many years being successful in, you know, in my career, I say, life is not about success. Life is not about to get your famous or not it's about get your fame. It's not, it's about your journey, your life. It's your life. Your life is what? It's discovering about yourself, about another people, about you, the world you're living in. But why does self-discovery take you to Tibet? If you want to understand yourself, you understand somebody else. Mm. Which means we always say, without black, you cannot see how white that means. You have to compare what the difference. I want to go to Tibet as just alone to question myself, then see another people, to understand another way how people see life, the value of life. What did you discover? I discovered just a different way how people want to, you know, I went to that, go to Tartan monks, live in the temps, journey to different mountains alone, and without no planning, just have a bag, stop a car, stop a boat, jump in, walk around. And uh, because uh, life is all about journey, you know, you wish nicely, you should take the journey as most uh, unpredictable journey as possible. You can, you can experience more. Well, I'm wondering if it's around that time that you became especially fascinated with the human body, because of course, it is humanity and our bodies that connects everyone on the planet. And I'm wondering, was that discovery part of your journey while you were in Tibet and Cambodia? Yeah, then I found out the two things. Of course, the two separate things, but we don't really separate them most of the time. But sometimes I really separate them. Because one's a physical journey, how physically living our life, how physical, like physically somehow we're like an animal. Like any animal, we're hungry, we want to eat. It's a physical needs. It's like any animal, like a dog, you know. But we're different, we are, have another thing is our heart and my brain. A brain are uh, different because animal doesn't have the brain of a human being. That's a huge difference. Then we directing, we learn by experience, we see, absorb everything, then you understand things. What is your vision now for modern dance? Modern dance, we have to see a big history way, how to think. What the modern dance means is they're not di they're different tradition. Mm. That's modern dance means they're not tradition dance, which means modern dance changes by the time when the, our lives keep going, which means- It's part of the journey. It's part of the journey of a time, mm -hmm. which means the time of dance, we can say the time of dance, not the modern dance, <coughs> but uh, they are the mirror of our lives, our 
modern culture, modern civilization, how where we're going. It feels great that dan you know, new dance is being recognized, that someone can use dance as a really effective art form on, on a large level, you know, and um, it's hard. Dance is a really difficult art form, I think, to speak to people right now. Um, and I think he does it in a way that's striking and beautiful and touches people and to be a part of that is great. You have actually said that your number one goal mm. is to inspire. Tell me what inspiring it, means Because to you. for me, inspire is I see beauty in our life our day, every day, I think so many things around us are so beautiful. Even using my first Western sense or Eastern senses or my own, you know, develop of senses. So many things are beautiful around us. But you need to share that. Also, some things are so interesting in our life. As a human being, so interesting. Any animal is interesting. Our nature is so interesting, how things work. That's so like magic. But there is that have logic behind it. But we haven't discovered that. Then you, once you are in that situation, I, I building my work based by my passion, then you are discovering something, you share with that. I want my work inspire other people about life. Life is not that bad if you really mm. see the positive side, the interesting part of life. Of course, you may see struggling emotionally, don't you stuck. But if you try to discover why that happens, how you can think that that's a really interesting animal we, behave like that because blah 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 then you find out where they come from then you don't just punish in the beginning for the first steps you know and uh, then you don't get yourself in that kind of situation and those things bother me I see things always happy and I would tell people I haven't cried for 20 years there's nothing that sad all of us emotionally move with the sentimentally memory nostalgia make it move a little bit but sometimes most of the things I don't see bad situations. So your hope is to inspire people to absorb the beauty around them. Yes, and also to open the way to see things that possibilities in the arts doing the most in our life. They inspire people to see things different, they find a different way to see different things open all the senses. Then you can be creative more things. But of course basically have a good heart too. That which means you have to develop that senses make people in the good place to see the beauty of lives. Then tell me, what's next for you? What is your vision for yourself? My vision, you know, this is my thoughts, but for myself, I just have to back to what I really can do as a hum, human animal. I only can do one step by step, mm. which means I have to back to like everybody doing. Get up in the morning, figure out this, reply emails, and if I don't have time, you have to do it. Then you have to get your things done. You still have to get your laundry done. You still have to get your work done. Like you just do the best you can do every day. Then you make sure you do your good work. Then like every human being, I just do everything as good as I can for day by day. Well, Shenwei, I think we're all looking forward to sharing the journey with you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.